Hey guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for today. And this one's going to be a little bit off the beaten path. I haven't done one of these tier rankings in quite some time. I think the last ones I did were ranking the DLC episodes as well as the uh, best raids in general. So I put up a poll on my community post and the overwhelming uh, vote was towards ranking the DCO DPS metas. Now, I'll start this off by saying there may be some metas that I missed. These are just the ones that uh, I felt had the most impact over time. Um, you won't be able to really tell from my descriptive pictures, so <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll explain the metas first and then I'll rank them. Uh, I, I didn't think a point of doing it, like a typical ranking has like S tier and, and like S and B, A, B, C, D. Uh, I didn't see the point of ranking it like that because all these are completely OP and that's why they were metas, so they'd all be S tier. So basically I'll rank them from 1 to 15. So if there's metas that I missed here, certainly put them in the comment section. I tried to walk a fine line between like glitches and exploits compared to metas like say like quantum's fake time bomb i mean that's that's obviously a glitch but i use some other ones here too that i mean they were around for quite some time so i mean i kind of might be a little bit of a hypocrite in terms of some of my choices but like i said before you know you're free to put your uh questions and concerns in the comment section as well so let's explain these first before i rank them so uh, these aren't in any particular order. We'll just kind of go from left to right. So tactical mod swaps, those were popular during the AM days, uh, specifically in damage comps. So you had KCT. So what would happen is you'd start the fight or basically the raid would start basically. You'd pop ice elemental with extended supercharge and then switch mods uh, and then put them, or you'd either switch head mods or switch the heads in general, depending on how many marks you had. But uh, you'd switch from tactical, um, or sorry, extended supercharge with ice elemental to uh, ice bash critical three, and the base same thing with like uh, munitions uh, big gun. So you before you pop a big gun, you put on extended supercharge, so you get you get more supercharge in return, and then you pop big gun and switch to um, critical ki three. So in just terms of maximizing your damage, so that was that was very popular um, in terms of being a meta. It was pretty much every single. It was most popular with ice in terms of ice elemental, but big gun very strong as well. So moving on to the next one, we got death blossom. So if you remember these, uh, when you would pop a death blossom before cutscene, in the cutscene it would explode, and then the damage would be added to the scorecard. So in terms of being like a DPS meta. Um, it was just something that like a lot of like try her DPS did <laughs> you'd see all the death blossoms pop four cutscenes and then they'd explode and then all of a sudden you have a ton of scorecard damage so some of these raids have a lot of cutscenes so that's free damage every single cutscene it's just really annoying uh, think of it like this like uh, I didn't put like the four boos on this meta list because I felt that four boos or really wasn't really DPS meta it's just something to do but uh, this is basically the king of that type. So if you felt that like the four boos should be on here, like a boo utility belt, Death Blossom was the top of that because it was around for a very long time. It was really annoying being fake damage on the scorecard, uh, especially at that time. So, and there's nothing you can do about it. Next one, uh, Telekinesis with Mental. This kind of comes into play two times. So the original time was back during DLC three. So if you were a mental DPS, um, specifically in Gates of Tartarus, if you could keep up with like the light DPS gadgets and electric uh, throughout the first boss fight, throughout the tunnels, throughout the second boss fight, if you made it to that final boss, then you weren't losing. It was impossible for you to lose. Uh, what happened was there are statues in that final boss, uh, boss fight. I forget what they were like. Um, what, what the statues were? They came to life. I forget what they look like. They're kind of like the Avatar Magic statues from Prime Battleground. But uh, they threw fireballs. And then with Mental's Telekinesis, it would basically take those fireballs and throw them at the boss. So the fireballs are supposed to be going thrown from the statues to the players to kill them. But Mental's Telekinesis would pick them up and throw them at the boss for massive damage. So it was either uh, Mental DPS, if you were losing to those other like electric hard light and gadgets and stuff, uh, you could make up tons of space on the final boss fight or just pass them all, all of right. So massive damage in terms of meta. Uh, the second time was during Prime Battleground. So that was, you needed, uh, basically at that point you needed a partner. You needed either a light DPS or a light controller that would use li the lightweight. So they would throw lightweight uh, and then Mental would use telekinesis to telekinesis the lightweight and then throw them at the enemies. 
for once again massive damage so it was a uh, it made prime battleground really easy especially if you had a few mental dps it was a way to kind of cheese the raid and make it super easy um I, i'm not sure how popular it was i should say as well as these metas there may be some that are more popular on the pc server and some are more popular in ps or vice versa uh, so I can't really, I, I can't speak to the PS server, but I can certainly speak to the PSC one being around here since the very beginning. Uh, and then talking about the very beginning moves us to our next one, which I'm probably sure not many of you will remember. Uh, you'd have to be playing the beta uh, or not so much the beta, but in terms of the game before server merge. And that was Sork Transmute uh, Martial Arts Rukens. So to understand Sorcery's Transmute, uh, which you'll kind of see in this next picture here with the clown box. I know that's kind of jumping ahead, but same concept. So basically, Sork's Transmute would uh, destroy objects, and basically when it destroyed objects, uh, it would do massive damage. Martial Arts Shuriken Storm, uh, like a Shuriken Flurry, when you basically, you're showing, you're doing the Shuriken Storm and throwing multiple, it counted those as objects. So if you would transmute your Shuriken Storm as Martial Arts, all your Shuriken Storms would blow up doing massive damage. Uh, this was especially very powerful in PvP. You could basically just wipe enemies by doing that uh, because it just they couldn't keep up with the damage. So that was around in the early days, not uh, but very powerful. Uh, you definitely were sort transmuting, that's for sure. And then again, this was during um, DLC 4, 5. Uh, you had the sort clown box. So same concept. It treated clown box as an object. So basically you would hit transmute and then clown box and then you would explode your clown box for damage. Now it did a little bit of damage, but mostly it did fake scorecard damage as well. So it did both. It did damage and scorecard damage. Um, it was also very powerful once again in PvP. You could basically troll enemies by going into like say FOSS, like which is 88 PvP. You'd have like uh, everyone in the group put clown box on because clown box wasn't supercharged at that point because yeah, uh, a couple of things. Well, it, it turned into a supercharge during throwing the dead, but it should have been turned into a supercharge at this point. But yeah, back then, clown box wasn't a supercharge. You basically have your entire AV8 group put clown box on, except one sorcery healer, and the sorcery healer transmute and then blow up the entire group. So basically, you just wipe groups all in one shot using sork transmute. So that was a very powerful meta. I mean, sorcery still. I mean, that's how they competed with like the top tier. Like the sorcery could e easily compete with any top tier DPS by uh, transmuting a uh, clown box is one of those cheesy things but i mean that's a, what that's what they had to do but uh, uh normally the meta you'd still be like it's not gonna be high up on the list because you'd still be gadgets or lighter celestial stuff like that but uh was celestial at that time i think celestial no clown box was fixed before celestial so at that point it would be in like light gadgets um electricity stuff like that so sorcery that's what they did to kind of keep up so it's funny next was dervish clipping so dervish clipping is not what it is right now. In the past, dervish clipping actually used to be able to be clipped with a power, which kind of made no sense because it was a damaging power. So, uh, so basically, it was a really popular with light DPS. So light DP DPS basically clip their powers with dervish and then clip dervish with another power. So you could like do a power dervish power and then still have the dervish animation. Now you're still vulnerable to block, but that rarely even mattered with DPS. So, I mean, you wouldn't use it in PVP because you could still block it and still get knocked down after the fact. But uh, dervish power clipping was uh, very intensive, especially with um, with light DPS. That was around like DLC. That was most popular around DLC three, I think. I think four was still around with Hand of Fate. I think it got fixed after that. So something a bit more common, artifact swapping. Um, I wouldn't say this is technically a meta yet. It may become a meta, but uh, it's still very powerful in terms of being able to, to switch to, you know, scrap the soul cloak to get your supercharge, swap to Gemini on a, su on a supercharge, swap to Philosopher Stone on a supply drop, swap to Dead King Scepter on an orbital. I don't know. This is all massive damage increases just by swapping an artifact. So that's, uh, it may not be as popular as a meta yet, but uh, now that more people are getting PS5s and PC players have been doing it for the whole time on channels and stuff, um, it's going to become. Uh, a certainly prevalent meta going forward. So the next one with my <laughs> still crappy images, we have uh, either the Phantom Triangle is what it was referred to on the PS side, but it was basically grenade clips with a light on the P uh, PC side. So basically, as a light DPS, you could do like um, you do like a grenade power fan, grenade snap trap, snap trap to prec fan. Uh, you could also do quad nades with like entrap, so basically grenade, entrap, grenade, uh, power fan, grenade, prec, uh, six, snap trap, and then uh, prec fan. 
Uh, you could also do it with consumables. Uh, there is a range consumable that you could basically do it. So you do like grenade, consumable, grenade, power, power fan, etc. So that's uh, basically just putting grenades in e between every single power's light is what you could do. Same thing with like you basically do like grenade claw, whole claw, like grenade whips. So it's just um, basically fitting in grenades between every single power's light because. The drawback to, to rifle was that it was a slow movement, which didn't matter because you had claw. So basically, you could lunge between groups of ads without even worrying about a weapon lunge because you had grenades. And then the grenades as well, it split very heavily on, on multiple targets, still did well in single target damage. So just overall, uh, if you were light back then, the only weapon choice you ever had was rifle. So if you were light, you had to have a rifle. And that was basically bar none. You know, no one else used any other things. So bulk smoke bomb, this was tied into the Venmer suspensor. So the Venmer suspensor, when that came out as an artifact, it basically moved precision into a meta. Uh, precision basically got its first kind of heyday with Venomous Suspensor, and specifically with both Smoke Bomb because of its short window. Now, once again, it wasn't like a crazy powerful meta because the high risk, high reward with both Smoke Bomb was still there, so uh, you could still get interrupted on it or, or countered. But if you got your both Smoke Bombs off without any worries, then you were dominant DPS, especially during like um, that was uh, Gotham City Zoo, the Spindrift Raids, etc. So both Smoke Bomb before was changed. It was very powerful because you could get two of them off in the terms of Venomous Suspensor. And then the massive prec increase. I mean, it, it, Venomous Suspensor was the very first artifact that was literally nerfed. Like they literally nerfed an artifact. When you talk about Eye of the Gemini, which we'll get to here, they didn't nerf Gemini. They nerfed healer supercharges to combat gem spam. So they made them 10,000s. So Venomous Suspensor is the first present setting that the DCs ever nerfed an artifact because of how strong it was. And that's just, it, it just moved precision into a whole new field. So the little juice box here, that was the renowned bot clipping. That was before stats revamp. Um, that was basically, I wouldn't say made popular by OG Mentor, but uh, he certainly <laughs> tied into it. Uh, you always saw his videos doing it. And I think he bought like a hundred juice, a hundred of the renowned boxes before they, they got fixed. But uh, uh, essentially what these were was you could basically clip any power with a consumable. So basically if any of your powers had cooldowns, you could, it's it's similar to bot clipping as well. Like during AM days, you could have four uh, like a repair bot, broker bot, those bots on your utility bar to clip like gadgets, EMPs and stuff like that. Same with the mental, you could clip mental animations, although it wasn't as powerful. So the, the case, same concept with it, except with these renowned boosters um, or the XP booster packs, they had no cooldown. So it's basically like instant. Uh, and basically you could clip anything, orbital strikes, uh, supply drops, any power, just instantly clipped, had like a half a second cooldown. And uh, that was a very, that was very strong for a long time. Was, we thought it was going to last, but then stats revamp kicked in and basically nerfed everything in terms of clipping, like bot clipping, renowned clipping, anything. But uh, during its time, you certainly were using these uh, consumables to be able to clip. Same with like bot. So uh, I would tie this, tie the renowned boosters with the bot clipping. Because bot clipping was prevalent throughout AM days. Uh, you always saw gadgets. Even nowadays, you still see Prec DPS using it, uh, which needs to get nerfed again. But um, back during AM days, you always saw bot clipping with like, especially gadgets and some mentals as well. So next one, this may be, again, on the PC side. I'm not sure how prevalent it was on the PS side, but um, gadgets, no, sorry, not gadgets, but uh, one-handed spin chop and focus blast uh, were incredibly powerful at the time, especially with gadgets in terms of like the, sp the spin chop, fear gas clip, uh, fear gas gauss grenade. Uh, that was a, a meta, basically meta combo rotation with gadgets. But spin chop was just incredibly powerful. You could clip it immediately did full damage basically all you had to do is wait for your body just to spin and you could basically clip out of it uh, in terms of be able, its clip ability um, it, it was so powerful even the devil the developers at the time couldn't replicate its damage so we the players kept saying like spin chop is way too powerful nerf its damage reduce it but the developers couldn't execute how we could clip they couldn't clip as fast as we could on the pc server uh, back then so they they left it uh, same thing with focus blast focus blast is more during paradox days uh, Focus Blast was just ridiculously overtuned in terms of his damage. Uh, you could see if you if you pull up like a paradox video from during that time, there's a good chance you're gonna see people just doing like Focus Blast, power, Focus Blast, power between every single power, even gadgets, quantum, anything is all gonna be Focus Blast uh, because of how powerful it was, and that got nerfed. I think it was GU32. 
I'm not sure. I, I mean, personally, I made a big deal out of the forums. I was kind of leading the charge in terms of focus blast nerfs because I thought it was just ridiculous. Um, and that usually got replaced with like dual wield range clipping. But in terms of anything like staff range attack, dual wield range attack, everything had basically either disadvantages or damage splitting. Like uh, dual wield range attack, uh, range hold, basically split damage after two targets. Focus blast would hit the one, but it'd be massive damage. So that got nerfed. So that's probably about the only two weapon combos I can ever think of that both got nerfed because of the damage potential. So, like, you don't see, like, dual pistol didn't get nerfed, like, rifle, staff, all these combos. They didn't get nerfed, but two weapon uh, one-handed combos got nerfed at different times in the game. So that's definitely one-handed. And, and even look how popular one-handed is today. So, like, you've got, like, um, spin chop, uh, focus blast, you've got the flip slash. I mean, one-handed in terms of its a met, being a meta weapon, it's probably the most meta weapon we've ever had in terms of DC's history. So next one's going to be Big Gun AM. This is kind of self-explanatory as well. During AM days, munitions, uh, if the enemies or NPCs were classified as minions, Big Gun would basically just instantly just poof them away uh, and be massive damage. Like, if you went into, uh, against, like, a munitions DPS and, like, uh, uh, the biggest example would be, like, Olympus, you were, like, five or six million dollars, million dollars, five or six million damage behind, like, instantly. Uh, I was a big proponent of this. Uh, if I saw another DPS drop an orbital strike, I'd poof the ads away so they got zero damage from the orbital strike. It was just you could you could do some tr you could do a lot of tricks with big gun in terms of getting his damage munitions during AM days. As long as as long as there's minions, it was incredibly powerful. It was meta basically. Um, munitions was definitely one of the most meta powers in terms of AM days, and uh, and that was only to do with big gun. Next one's phase dodge, same thing, though self-explanatory. Phase dodge was probably the most one of the most powerful abilities before GU34 when it was nerfed in terms of the cooldown being increased. But uh, in terms of phase dodge, phase dodge automatically made lower tier powers capable of beating the high tier ones. So back in the days, like um, light DPS, gadgets DPS, quantum, and celestial did not need phase dodge. You didn't use they were, they were powerful enough you didn't need phase dodge. But powers like earth ice sorcery nature ones that had long animations uh or were basically middle tier putting a phase dodge rotation on them immediately made them top tier so like i that was uh, what i did routinely throughout my videos i took uh, like earth dps and would beat gadgets or celestial i would take i would take nature and, and beat celestial or light dps as nature all be using phase dodge rotation so just by having one power as a clipping power with a one second cooldown it immediately changed the entire metas uh, so you could still have those top tier powers that didn't use phase dodge or you can make any power in the game completely viable by using phase dodge so rage rage on release was probably the most i wouldn't say most broken but because it wasn't technically broken because it was just how it was released but rage was the most powerful new power set added to the game in its history in terms of like you know like earth the dlc 3 sucked electricity dlc one was good but that was really only because it was like trash mobs electricity was never good on boss fight so he just brought like an electric dps to clear like trash mobs and FOSS 2 i mean that's all electric was for uh but like quantum wasn't that good on release a lot of the am powers like munitions wasn't that good on release celestial was good on release but it was better for healing like the dpsi was still good but it wasn't like op or broken all of that it was just like really power conservative but rage you had berserk lasting twice as long you could clip outrage without rage uh, the rage mechanic in terms of in DPS stance was almost as strong as tank stance. So basically like PVP, you couldn't be killed because the rage healing back was so strong. Uh, I mean, you could, when rage was released, every DPS had to be rage. You did not stand a single hope and a prayer beating uh, a rage DPS when it came out. It was so powerful. Like you could have like a group of five or six rage DPS going to paradox wave and beat it in like eight minutes because not only could they heal themselves, but they were clipping Outrage with Outrage. And then back then, Outrage did more damage if it was below 50%. And then you, you had uh, your own self buffs, like uh, for the critical buffs. And then you had Berserk lasting like the toy double duration. So just crazy powerful. Gem Spam. Gem Spam, once again, self exploratory That's pretty much the meta we're in right now. Um, you have to change your entire rotation around to compensate for Gem Spam. You know, you need to run multiple supercharges. You have to have either the Gemini. Healers are changing it, so they run, like, three supercharges now instead of, like, actually pure healing. It's all gem spam now. 
So, I mean, tanks are running, sometimes running double supercharges to get feats like, uh, like you'll see videos of like QE or videos of FGSE and you'll see green circles just constantly throughout fights. It's not a meta that I'm very happy with, but I mean, that it's, if you're going to describe a meta and like describe a meta and, and that's all right, I just repeat myself, but if you're going to, if you're going to basically say like, this is what a meta means, it's jam spam. Uh, you you get kicked from raids if you don't jam spam you're ridiculed as a healer if you don't jam spam i mean that's what the dps want and that's what they require it's just jam spam is completely taken over this game since it came out even even it, they even nerfed healer supercharges because jam spam was so strong back during like uh, atlantis dlc you didn't you didn't take any damage because all the healer supercharges are 5000 power cost so they had every 30 seconds they had a healer supercharge or or a controller supercharge so you didn't take any damage so it was like making the game completely trivial and then they nerfed healer superchargers but didn't actually change Gemini. And now now at rank 200, you're getting the extra stats like the 5% prec and might and tanks are getting their resto and dom. You know, it's just completely, completely OP. So let's rank them. So, I mean, it doesn't take someone too long to figure out that gem spam is going to be the most powerful meta. I mean earning your supercharges off cooldown like you could go into qe as an electric dps and use circuit breaker every 12 seconds for the entire raid so imagining you're popping a supercharge every 12 seconds for an entire raid because of how much damage span you have you know that's completely not practical same thing with like berserk i mean the only thing that why rage wouldn't be the top dps is because you can't really melee an elite if you can melee an elite or go to like a melee content you're using berserk off cooldown you might as well put accelerated berserk into like your 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 back mod I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, the second one, I would have to go Rage. I mean, if you guys weren't around for Rage when it came out, um, that was during the end of DLC 5, or uh, Origin Crisis, sorry. That wasn't DLC 5. Um, right during the end of Origin Crisis, in terms of like Assault and Battery, was when Rage was kind of prevalent in terms of it being um, nerfed and adjusted. But Rage, upon release, was not only one of the most fun DPS power sets ever, because you could basically just be like millions ahead of the DPS, even by like the, the Lex Luthers and, and, um, and Nexus. <laughs> it was just completely crazy, both for um, PvE and PvP. Uh, number three, I'm going to have to put Phase Dodge because of its impact in the game. I mean, Phase Dodge, was, if you weren't like a top tier power, um, like a meta, like a, you know, Photon power at that time, Flavor of the Month power, you had Phase Dodge. If you were Nature or Sorcery or. Sometimes Quantum, Earth, Ice, you had Phage out during a loadout if you want to be competitive. Mentival's another one. Mental was really good, but it had really long animations. So you put Phage out on, all of a sudden Mental's a top tier power. To be, it's a Mental to be able to compete with like Gadgets and, and Light and Celestial, which normally Mental wouldn't have because it's all it was all single target dots back then. But then you had, you know, Hand Blaster Phage Dodge, putting it right up there. Uh, number four. In terms of meta, I'm gonna put big gun because I mean, you had if your raid had minions, you just on the DPS you'd have DPS switch to, to munitions. So all I had to do was have big gun. Even thinking like um, uh, JFA and US and uh, USR like during that DLC, so you had big gun just to wipe all the ads. You had big gun on the final boss fight, so you had big gun anytime you could use big gun on hallway ads. They were always putting it that's why people hated the sandbags and dps would rush ahead and drop chronomatic emitters to stun the ads then big gun them i mean big gun was as pretty much as close as a meta as you could get to as well in terms of a meta ability so just imagine like big gun during am days with like gems bam ridiculous number five five i'm actually gonna have to put you know, same thing. These are my choices, but I mean, this is how I view their impact. So number five, I'm going to put Spin Chop and Focus Blast because, I mean, same thing. I mean, look how many DPS, look how many players use one-handed today. There's tons of weapon choices out there. You don't have to be one-handed. I'm sure I'm sure they're not using one-handed just because they like sword. It's because they knew how strong it was or how good the weapon combos are after all this time. So there's not one point in time in the game's history where one-handed was a bad weapon choice. It's been good since the very beginning in terms of Spin Chop very fast clippable combo and then you, and then during the paradox days for range dps you'd focus blast uh six hmm. six will put bot clipping just because uh, uh, just because i incorporate with bot clipping and renown booster clipping that was around for a while and, and the impact it had was huge 
I mean, once again, your label is like a try hard DPS if you used it, but the impact that those bot had were definitely prevalent uh, and prominent. Uh, after that, we're going to put on Venomous Suspenser and Bow Smoke Bomb. Once again, I mean, you could argue, like a lot of DPS argued, well, like Bow Smoke Bomb is an OP because you can get interrupted and stuff like that. But I mean, there's plenty of times where you didn't get interrupted and you would just smoke everyone in like Gotham City Zoo using Bow Smoke Bomb or like in Atlantis or Spindrift, stuff like that. Um, it was just Venom Suspenser was crazy powerful at the time because he not only had both Smoke Bomb, but you also had like Flurry Shot as well. So Flurry Shot was still the same exactly with Venom Suspenser. It's just that um, maybe I shouldn't have labeled this both Smoke Bomb and labeled it like Venom Suspenser, but same, I mean, same concept. That, that was the that was the meta until uh, both Smoke Bomb got changed. Uh, after this, we're gonna go. We'll go artifact swapping. Same thing, self-explanatory. This it's kind of a merging meta. It's been, I mean, it's been talked about for a while, and I mean, it's very expensive because I mean, uh, all these are in the game right here. But I mean, artifact swapping is gonna cost you hundreds of dollars because you have to have all these artifacts at like 200 rank. So it's not something everyone can do. But if you can do it, it's very powerful. But uh, it's very, it's very expensive for a meta, which I mean, I'm sure the game loves. Uh, after that, in terms of meta, we'll go we'll go Phantom Triangle grenades. Because I mean, once again, if you were hard light, you were desperately seeking that rifle. I mean, when Paradox came out and which it was determined that the rifle dropped off like a specific boss combination, I think it was like the Ravager. You had groups farming just for that rifle. I mean, you had to have that purple rifle as as light as a light DPS. Same thing. So it's like. Um, and especially, light was very popular on the PS side as well in terms of like their Phantom Triangle and the and the and the got the light guides on the forums and stuff like that. So I know I know on the PlayStation side, light was very popular like this. I mean, they couldn't duplicate what we could do on the PC side, but I mean, in terms of their Phantom Triangle, that was definitely a meta. And light DPS is very strong too. So light DPS being meta, and then the Phantom Triangle being meta as well. Uh, so after this, we'll go. Uh, at that point, we'll use Dervish Clipping. I mean, back then, if you were using, I mean, as long as you can manage the power, because it was still a high power cost, but I mean, everyone was dervish clipping. I mean, there's people even defending dervish clipping on the forum saying, oh, it should work like this. This is intended because this is how it worked before. Because technically, when the game came out, this is how it worked. And then it got reverted because it got changed. And then it got changed back. So everyone's like, well, I mean, this is how it worked originally. So it should keep working like this. So there's people actively defending that you could clip dervish with the power. And it was completely fine. So. But uh, yeah, if you were if you were DPS back then and you had decent controllers, you used Dervish Clipping no matter what power you were. It just worked. It worked the best with light, but you could use anything with like uh, um, gadgets as well. Uh, now in terms of these, the last four get a little bit tricky. I know tactical mod swapping. I'm gonna put the bottom because I mean it was a meta, but I mean it wasn't exactly super powerful. It was just something a lot of DPS did. Uh, I mean that may be my cop out in terms of that. Some guy, some one of you guys in the comments might think of something better, but I mean, tactical mod swapping was really powerful and it was a meta, but um, it just wasn't as prevalent as some of the other ones. Uh, same thing with like Death Blossom. I mean, that technically was a meta, it was just really annoying, but I mean, every a lot of players did it. They just pop it in the cutscene, pop it out of the cut in the cutscene, change it back, get some free damage, which is frustrating. Uh, I would say Sork Transmute would probably be the more powerful of the three left. Uh, once again, that's something that many of you probably wouldn't have experienced because that's going to be like pre-server merge, but, uh, it was definitely fun to play around with at the time. Uh, more of you may remember Sork Clown Box, so we'll put that in there in terms of being a meta, but same thing if you were like, during like T those T4 or 5 days, you, if you were Sorcery, you would use Sork Clown Box. You just, that's how you did the DPS, because I mean, not only did you get scorecard damage, you also got, uh, you also got some damage as well. It wasn't completely fake like Time Bomb. It just was super, super cheesy. And usually, uh, ironically, what I would do, if, if they screwed up the transmute and didn't hit it before clown box and didn't register, I would just pick up the DPS as clown box and throw them into, like, danger. So, like, this was really popular during, like, Black Dawn in terms of, like, fighting, like, the clowns on Tyler last boss. So, basically, if a, if a Sork DPS screwed this up, I would just pick them up and throw them at the clowns, and the clowns would kill them when they broke out the clown box in melee range because, I mean, that, you know, that's their fault for doing that. Uh, and then we'll do 13, we'll do the telekinesis. So that's how I have them ranked. So we got gem spam, rage on release, phase dodge, big gun, one-handed, bot clipping, venomous dispenser, art swapping, 
Phantom Triangle or Grenade Clipping, Dervish Clippings, Sort Transmute, Sarukan Storms, Clown Box clip, uh, Transmute, Telekinesis, Death Blossom, Cutscene Damage, and Tac Mod Swapping. So that's my ranking of the DCO DPS metas. So you can leave in the comment section how you guys would rank it and how you guys would differ from it. And we'll see you in the next uh, tier video. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.